our Cubs recap podcast with my partner, Gordon Wittenmeyer, with his Washington Huskies coffee mug. He's excited. I'm David Kaplan. You can get us everywhere you get your favorite podcast, as well as right here on our recap YouTube channel. Gordon, happy holidays. We got a little time off with the holiday break. We didn't record because the Cubs did nothing and still haven't. Are you surprised? Why are we recording now? Because the people want to know what's going on. Okay. So as you look at this. I think we just summed it up. I keep, yeah, exactly. I keep hearing from people I trust. The Cubs are the favorite to get Cody Bellinger. The latest to report that was John Heyman. Uh, They're in on Imanaga, the left-handed pitcher who closed out the World Baseball Classic for the Japanese champions. So do you expect this to keep dragging on? And is it simply Jed saying, I'm going to wait until the price comes down. And when you're ready to talk, call me. Yeah. I, I do. I've, I've, I've talked to people around the game uh, and they're, they're kind of a little uh, confused about the Cubs ex- expecting more, especially after that council signing, but kind of are looking at Jed as kind of this guy that, uh, you know, what, what one guy said, if, if Jed were a boxer, he'd be that guy in the corner, like covering up, you know, now, if, if you remember Rocky, uh, Rocky did a lot of that and then came back <laughs> and then came back and threw some haymakers. You did. So if 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 it's like uh, if if uh, Jed is like Rocky Balboa, stay tuned. Uh, and he certainly has a lot of uh, what they like to call powder that's dry. And there's plenty of uh, guys still out on the market. So certainly, I mean, they've, they've literally spent nothing uh, this winter. Two months in, they literally but, have spent not one dollar. Yeah, right. So that it's coming. Um, and there's still a couple of their guys out there, as you, the guys you pointed out. And, you know, to, to say that Cody Bellinger, that they would be a favorite for him, uh, is almost not worth saying because Toronto was one of the other teams that was interested, for instance. And Toronto just uh, brought back Kiermaier. That lessens their their need. In fact, um, their GM, Ross Atkins, uh, was talking to reporters uh, today or yesterday about uh, some of their recent signings. And said he kind of likes where their team is, and they might only add one more player. And if it is, it'd be kind of in that outfield DH mix. That still could be Bellinger, um, but it sounds like they're not talking about uh, necessarily a big outlay. And if and you know a, a big ticket guy like him, it, it did. It just didn't sound like the tone that uh, Atkins was using. So it maybe maybe Jed's. Um, really sly and and he's gonna he's gonna win on the on on his approach but so far you know uh you know, fans have a reason to be frustrated for sure okay so what is the most important thing jed gets done because i had somebody over there that i trust who said to me look we are not pushing every chip in we have to win this year but he said we're healthier than we've ever been Craig wants us to play our young guys that we never give a chance to. He said, Christopher Morrell deserves a chance to be an everyday player. He said, Pete Crow Armstrong deserves a chance to make the club and play every day. So with that mindset, what do you think? And then I'll tell you what I think is the most important thing they can do to address some need on this team. Well, look, Pete Crow Armstrong deserves whatever he earns in spring training. And then, and then whatever he earns in April and then whatever he earns in May, he hasn't proven anything yet at the big league level. So he's a, he's a, you know, he's whatever he, he becomes, but he's nothing yet. He he hasn't earned anything yet. Morell's a lot closer to a guy that's earned some time, some playing time, you know, more of what you have in him as a big league ball player. So I'll trust council's uh, opinion on that going forward. Council also has realized he's not in friggin' Milwaukee anymore. This team, he's done a lot with less in Milwaukee. There's no question about that. And he's one of the best managers in the game. Some people might say he's best manager in the game, and I won't argue with you. But this is a franchise and a team that needs to be swinging with the big boys out there in the offseason and swinging with the big boys in getting experienced, high-level talent proven guys you sh- yes you need a farm system your farm system has to produce and we we can talk all about 
what happened to that 16 team and its decline because they didn't do that. We know that. But the Dodgers do both, for instance. You don't have to be the level of Dodgers. Nobody is, really. But you have to, where you are in the marketplace, you have to be one of those teams that is aggressive in you know, the way they were when they won. So I get, I, I get and respect everything Council's saying, but he's 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 uh, managing for the big boys now. So they need to go out and get somebody. And they, and you ask me who, where they need to go. They still need to augment that starting pitching rotation. And I would suggest. Um, there's one left-handed bat left out there. Make sure you get Cody Bellinger at this point. Um, I would have gone after, and we talked about it weeks and weeks ago, months ago. There's maybe a couple other guys I would have rather targeted, give all else being equal. Fine, whatever. Cody Bellinger's there. He's a known quantity. He's a known quantity in your building. If he takes 200 and something million to go get him, then go get him. Okay, so you mentioned a while ago that they should have gone after another left-handed bat. Juan Soto got traded. I was told that the Cubs did did talk to the Padres and they were told, you want Juan Soto? We're getting Cade Horton and we're getting Pete Crow Armstrong. And Jed said, bye-bye for one year. No chance. Not doing it. Do you agree with that decision? Because I do. I would well, not. I mean, agree with that decision. I assume. So I have to take your word for it that, that that's, that that's the, where the package would have started. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm glad they were talking. They should have been. Mm-hmm. I also, you know, to, again, that decision, you know, I, I, your, your premise has, you know, some, some looseness to it because if I'm the Cubs, I don't make a trade like that unless I intend to do a lot to extend it. A lot. And we already know what he turned down. He turned down 400 and something million in Washington before they traded him. So my, my, my notion of making that trade is with the idea that he's a long-term asset, uh, an expensive one. Yes. So would I, would I have made that deal? I, I would have been more reluctant to trade probably Cade Horton, honestly, than, than PCA in that deal. Mm-hmm. For one thing, Soto replaces PCA in, in a, in a, in a number of ways. Um, so one year, but I'm, I'm not going there with one year with, with one year, it's a non-starter for one year. It's a non-starter that, right. I agree with you on that. Right. That's my point. Scott Boris isn't letting him do an extension at this point. Right. Well, Scott Boris would let him do an extension if it was the raised, he has extended guys before, but even if you let him go to free agency, you try to bring him back, for, for instance. And so um, that would be if, – if I traded for him, I'm not looking at him as a one-year guy. I'm looking at him as a guy I'm going to bring back, even if I have to wait until free agency first. But I'm going to talk, talk my ass off to him uh, all the way up in, 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 until that and through that. Okay, so I want you to tell me – if you agree with what I'm about to say, tell me. And if you don't – in your colorful, glib fashion, tell me why you don't agree. We got into this on the radio, and my partner, Jonathan Hood, said to me, your Cubs haven't done anything. How mad are you, and are you going to be upset? And I said, is opening day today? Is opening day tomorrow? Yeah, I heard this conversation. And if you tell me that February 15th or 16th, whatever the date is that they all report, and I got – Madrigal and Mastroboni at third. I got Mervis at first. And I got four guys that are rejects from the Korean Pro League as my bullpen. Yeah, I'm going to barbecue Jed. And I have a lot of respect for him. I'll go freaking off. I'll be the first guy leading the pitchforks coming up to Wrigley going, what the F, man? But as I said, the most important part of that comment was opening day isn't today. Opening day isn't tomorrow, and there's a ton of available players out there. He's got time. Do you agree with that, or you disagree with that? Well, the the fact that yes, it's it's been a slow moving market, even with some of the higher profile things we've seen get done. So yeah, there's still plenty of players out there and, and plenty of time. So yeah, I agree that 
that they still have time that they can get things done. I also agree that you should absolutely skewer the hell out of them if they don't do something. Honestly, Cap, if they don't do something significant, multiple player significant, because if you're I don't know how aggressive they got. I mean, look, at the end of the day, they were never going to get Shohei Otani. Never. So, so, so we know that. And in Yamamoto, I'm not sure he's worth what he wound up getting. So, and he I mean, also said, I was only going to the Dodgers. You heard his comment there. I was right. Going there. So that's, that's what he, what he said. You know, what? let's assume every man has his price. Right. So, but he already got a pretty damn good price. Uh, to go to where he said he was only going to go anyway. So, uh, I, you know, I, I can even, I can even tolerate that, so, but it does seem like, I mean, there's just been this, this overwhelming sound of crickets since, uh, since the council move, while there has been movement in baseball, uh, even, uh, you know, Tyler Glasnow trade, you know, uh, that would have been a guy that could help. And, and so things like that. And then you saw the Dodgers sign him. Uh, they, they trade Five for 125 and then they extend him. Yeah. So, you know, there's things they haven't done. And as the, as the sands come through that hourglass on this off season, you know, to me, the pressure rises on them. They better get their man slash men this, this winter, because if they don't, and you're, you know, to me, this is where Jed's job gets measured, right? Like last year was a, was the first measure of it because he had a lot to clean up what, with what he inherited. He made a bold move to go can Rossi like he did and to bring counsel in. That better pay off. That better be backed up. And so whatever he does next, this better be the right calculation to wait this wait out the market this long, even with incremental moves, they haven't even made incremental moves. Cap, that's the thing that that you start wondering about. Well, why didn't they go pick off a a reliever here and there? Why haven't they? I mean, there haven't been a lot of guys that moved, but you're the Chicago freaking Cubs. You could have probably gone and picked off a couple of insurance depth pieces, something like Frankie Montas, for instance. Look, Frankie Mont, Mont, Montas pitched one. And one third innings last year, one appearance at the end of the year after missing all season with the Yankees with shoulder surgery. The Reds just paid him $16 million for one year as an upside guy to come in. They think he's healthy. He's thrown 95 again. He says he's healthy. The whole thing. Well, the Reds just picked him off. One year, $16 million. I mean, the Cubs could have could have done that. And maybe and maybe that's too much for him. That, that may well be way too much for him. Mont, Mont, Montas said the Cubs didn't even talk to him. So well, why not? Why wouldn't you at least see if you get him for half that? See if you can get him for 10. Because it, maybe they don't think he's good enough. Could be. Could be. But you haven't done that with anybody is what I'm saying. You haven't done any of those incremental moves yet. No no kinds of insurance moves. And you are you do have the ability to do that. That's all I'm saying. So Josh, so Josh Hader's person, out there. Right, right. And so what I'm saying is that they may yet get it right. Mm-hmm. But they're limiting, you know, the, the the window is slowly a little bit narrowing to get it all right. And, you know, this this ultra patience and this this risk averse approach, it, it, it does come with a different kind of risk. Like you got to get this right. You're in the kind of a market. You got to get this right. You got to be ready to win. That division is right there for the taking. And if the Cincinnati effing Reds, who some people think are the favorites right now, and they got as many questions as they have, as, as they think they have answers, if they go and 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 get a, a ten, well, let's say let's say a five game lead on the division by the All Star break, that alone means you failed this winter. Yeah, but I wouldn't have given forty five million dollars to Jamer Candelario. Obviously, they wouldn't either. Right. They didn't even they didn't even talk to him. Correct. I right. think the Reds for a team that doesn't spend at the top end of the market to spend 45 million on a very pedestrian player. Yeah, I would not have. Well, done that. you know, and and he didn't they think he fits in a way that wouldn't have mattered 
to the Cubs. So maybe it's worthwhile to them. We'll, we'll see how it plays out. Um, they do things a lot differently there with the way they platoon their lineups and the way they mix and match and move guys all over the place. Um, every team does that to some degree. The Reds do it probably more than anybody. And so he, and, and plus they're extremely young. I mean, like ridiculously young among their hitters. So he's a, he's, he's a guy in the room for them that the Cubs don't even have to consider. So there's different things in play there. We'll see. But my, the point isn't which guy, you know, the, the, the Cubs should have got that the Reds got or anything like that. Although, although the pitching, pitching is pitching, right? And, and some of this is insurance, uh, insurance moves, some of it's upside moves. Um, but Nick Martinez, Nick Martinez would have been a good fit. Uh, he was a two year, $26 million guy that the Reds picked up. And I'm just using the Reds as examples because they actually have d made a lot of moves, whether you like them or not. Mm -hmm. And so, but they've, they're a team that's made moves. The Cubs haven't, but the moves that they've made and, and Nick Martinez, who was a, an effective swing man the last two years for, for the Padres, two really good years, um, could come in and either be a swing man for the uh, Cubs, uh, definitely insurance in the rotation, and maybe even a rotation piece toward the middle back end uh, of, a, of what you hope and plan is going to be a, a division champion rotation. Okay, so I'm looking at who's – left that are the top end guys Cody Bellinger we talked about I would not go north of six years for him if he wants more than six years bye bye see you later not interested I'm not going seven and eight years to get Cody Bellinger for me would you give him would you give him Chris Bryant money six and 182 yes okay yes I'd give I, don't, him I don't know million. that you'll get him for that but okay uh so you have off the board, according to this, this is the CBS list. Otani's gone. Yamamoto gone. Bellinger's available. Matt Chapman, I'm not really interested in. I wouldn't go down that road because they think Matt Shaw's very close to the big leagues. Why am I giving five years to a guy who wasn't very good the last three months of the season, who's 30? I No, I wouldn't do that. Well, it depends on, he's another Boris guy. It depends on what he thinks he needs to sign. Um, yeah, if he's, if he wants a mega deal, maybe not, but I, I also don't think if you're the Cubs, you're saying, well, I got a guy in, in, in the minors who's close. Why would I block him? No way. You should not be thinking like that as the Cubs. If that guy wants to earn his spot, he'll find a way. If he's good enough, he'll find a way. If you told me I'm signing Matt Chapman and he's coming off of hitting 325 with 110 knocked in and 35 bombs. That's not the case. I'm just saying it depends on what it is that he thinks he needs. Like he, he's probably overpriced. He's probably overpriced himself at this mm -hmm. point for what the Cubs want to pay for him. But you should not be thinking about it. Like, why would I go get a guy on a multi-year deal when I got a guy coming in the minors? Not if you're the Cubs. Okay. Blake Snell is still available. 31, almost 32. I probably wouldn't go down that road, but we'll see. Um, uh, Marcus Stroman is still out there. No chance the Cubs no. go revisit that. No, we know that's not. Um, Jordan Montgomery, 31, almost 32. I think he's going back to the Rangers. But I we'll like see. Montgomery, but I think um, you're probably right. He's not a bad player. Uh, and then you've got Reese Hoskins, who I think the Cubs are definitely kicking the tires on. He's that's, on that's a one-year. That's a good move to make. I, agreed. Josh. Hater, 29-year-old closer. If he wants more than four years, I'm not sure I'd go down that road. But if you could get him four years at 80 million, I'd probably do it. I'd probably take a chance. Wow. Wow. That's that's a lot for a reliever. Let me ask you this, Cap, when it comes to Hater. And I know this is kind of ancient history at this point, even within even within baseball. But you remember when, what was it, the All-Star break a few years back when some old tweets from high school of his came out? Yeah. Um, racist stuff, I believe, and he took a lot of heat, and then teammates spoke up, and, and he apologized and all that. And I think – Happened most, at the All-Star game. Right. And, and you know, most of that's been, you know, forgotten, in, in, except when guys like you and me bring it up. Uh, but you know that when a guy goes somewhere new – um, whatever his background is all comes up again. 
comes up again. And in a market like Chicago, that's certainly going to be the case. Do you think that has any, do you think that would have not necessarily bearing on whether they would sign him or want to sign him, but what kind of an impact do you think that would have just on him coming here? I don't think it would have a big impact because you and I were both there when Daniel Murphy came to the Cubs yeah. and he had to answer all those questions and then it died. And then it, he, he, was, he was also a rent a player and there's still the occasional fan out there that brings that up. Yeah, I mean, and, and you know, Aroldis Chapman for again an entirely different thing, a rent a player. Correct. That's different. If you go sign a guy to a four year deal, I don't know. The, you've also got a Justin Turner's thirty nine. Can I get him on a one year deal with an option? He had a really good year in Boston. See that something like that. Once you get to next month, and maybe you've made a big signing somewhere else. Maybe two if one of them's a pitcher. Like, like if I put him at third and said, all right, the kid in the minors, relax, keep getting better. I got a veteran guy, but I don't have him for five years. Yeah. that That's not bad if you get to that point. Yeah. Um, we, know, we, we, we know he likes uh, he likes hitting around Cubs uniforms. Maybe he likes hitting in a Cubs uniform. Yeah, no question. He crushes the Cubs. My God. Kills him. Remember who gave up the home run in the NLDS, or maybe it was the CS? I think it was the CS. Are you talking about Lackey? Yeah. yeah. Took Lackey deep into the uh, Dodger Stadium night on a Saturday night late. I was so mad. I'm like, when I saw him come, bringing him in, I went, okay, Gordon's guy Madden. Here we go again. This is going to end. <laughs> Bam. There it goes. Out. Out seal. They had man. They had nothing left. They were on fumes. You remember they had the issue with the plane on the way there. They had to play the fifth game against the Nationals. Yeah, somebody got sick on the plane. Uh, was it have something to do with Quintana and his wife or something like yeah, that? Yeah, Quintana's wife got sick. Yeah, and they had to land. Right, and and so I mean they got in the middle of the night, and they were already toast because they of. Were- they had that second half furious comeback to get into the playoffs. And then they took five games in this like epic game five to against to the Nationals the, and beat Max Scherzer and, Dustin. and then turn right around and have to go to the other coast. Yeah. And then they have the plane troubles. It was, yeah, it, they didn't have a chance in that series. They were done. There's still a ton of free agents out there, a ton. Araldus Chapman's still out there. Would you bring him in? <laughs> <laughs> that would be amazing. That would just, I would bring him in on a short deal. Sure. I'd bring yeah. him in on a one year deal. Absolutely. So there are guys out still there. still throwing a hundred last year, Cap. Yeah. Like if you tell me at the end of this deal, hey, Gordon, they signed Reese Hoskins, they got Cody Bellinger, they signed Justin Turner, and they got two or three relievers. Let's go. And, and one of them's Chapman on a one year deal? Yeah. I would be that that would make me sit up and want to watch what that team can do. Right. Yeah. yeah. So I, I think it, it would it would interest me and intrigue the hell out of me. Yes. So for all the fans out there like me that are like, what are we doing? Can we get something done? All I keep saying is is opening day today. Pump the brakes. Let this guy do his job. <laughs> we get to February 15th and everyone's at Scottsdale. And I'm like. Who's that guy? Pump oh, the got him out of Mexico. He's coming from oh, one, of those, Korea. No. one of the most reactionary talking heads in Chicago sports wants to pump the brakes. <laughs> My partner on the radio said, what? What do you mean? You're the guy that flies off the handle like that. Exactly. I'm willing to cut him some slack and let the man do his job. Again, we that's get to, just, we that's get to just the Sloan or Under Armour Performance Center, and I got – like the guy from major league, we got him out of the Mexican league and we got this guy from Korea and that guy was a washout in the Alaskan summer league. No, go get some freaking players, but Jed, I'll give you a little more runway. That's just cause you like Jed. That's cause we know he's a good dude. No, it has nothing to do with that. Seriously. I would absolutely be furious if they don't do much, if they doesn't look to me like they're trying. I think they are trying. I think they're trying to navigate 
okay, how much are we comfortable paying that guy? I get that. It's business, man. There's a cost of doing business. And there's more money under that luxury tax threshold than there's ever been. There's going to be more next year and the year after. Mm -hmm. You're the Chicago freaking Cubs. You're not there yet. Other teams around you who beat you for playoff spots last year are spending. Even the Cardinals spent $99 million on a It doesn't a matter. I, that, does it mean they spent it intelligently? They were I think they I, I, I think they filled the exact need that they had to to get to to right their ship. They got, you know, and, and Sonny Gray being one of them. I would have if if I'm the Cardinals fans, if I'm a Cardinals fan, I'm saying, you said you needed three pitchers. You got one, Sonny Gray. You got a dice roll in Lance Lynn. I like his competitiveness. I got no idea what he's going to give you next year. And you got another, maybe a little less of a dice roll, but still a dice roll in um, guy from Baltimore. Um, who am I thinking of? Well, uh, one a one year, another one year deal, like thirteen million or something. I got it. I got his name right here somewhere. Uh, Kyle Gibson. Correct. So. Uh, I, I would want more than that if I was a Cardinals fan. I'd want somebody a little more bankable than than those two one year guys. Like and, I didn't want Michael Walker. No, no interest. I'll tell you what. If if I'm the Cardinals and I've got Sonny Gray already and I've signed the other two guys to the one year deals, yeah. Then Walker. Then then I can afford to just completely whiff on one of those guys or get a a partial season out of one and a partial season out of another. That's how it's done these days on a lot of stats. Like, what if They're I just, get Michael Brantley? What if Michael Brantley comes? He's been banged up. That guy can flat out hit. What if he comes in here and is a part time player? Where? The Cubs? Yes. Left handed bat? Maybe, but he's always hurt. I'm not asking him to play 155 games. Give me 100 games. I'll piecemeal around you. But that 100, I need you to beat the shit out of the baseball. Maybe. And he's he's talented. He he's got a track record. He can do it. He's a hell of a hitter. Hell of a hitter. I'm starting to think we're gonna put something special together this year. I do like the idea of getting a left-handed bat. You gotta well, have that. You don't have enough of that. I, I, I have a feeling that you better leave your cell phone charged up. We'll be having an emergency podcast very soon. All right, I'm ready. By the way, the convention is next weekend. I got my invite today to the media social. I won't be there, but I did get it. Hey, how come nobody invited me? Because you're not welcome around the beat anymore, apparently. I might you're crash up. that party anyway. I'll give you my invite. You'll be my plus one. I'll go. <laughs> That's what we should do. I'll be there. Let's you do and it. I. It's next Friday. I'll promise you they do something by Cubs convention. That that would be, yeah. They should. They should, and that that would be perfect. That would be a fit. Well, you said you uh, Cody Bellinger done by the convention. That's interesting. You know what's funny is we got we got Scott Boris on tap for next week. On next Friday. Friday. Yeah. And uh He's joining the podcast, everybody. It'll be really interesting to see if he cancels on us. Right at the last minute, because he knows uh, we're, we're working on something, Gordon and Cap. Yeah, I can't come on. Can't right really now. come on and uh, do anything publicly with uh, Chicago media right now. That'd be amazing if we got if we got him and Bellinger is about to sign. He goes, "Well, I'll break it with you guys right now." Well, there's Cody's that too. The Cubs. Yeah, Scott, what's going on, with Cody? Well, actually, we just agreed to a deal with the Cubs. So we just decided that next week is the big week of the off season. For the Cubs leading into the convention. This is the big, the big one. Okay. All right. I'm so ready. Again, we're going to have Scott Boris next week on the pod right now from my seat. Jed, I've given you a lot of latitude here. Just don't let me get to the Under Armour Performance Center in Mesa, Arizona in February and find you have a done diddly. And I'm giving nobody latitude. Wow. What if your Washington Huskies losing the championship game? That ain't happening. <laughs> Good luck. That is not happening. I'm my not man. a Michigan man, so I we, hope you win. We can do one of those jump in the lake bets if you want. No, I'm a, I'm with you on this one. I'm a Husky. All right. I Good got man. A, 
I got a Siberian Husky right upstairs. That's right. I've met that dog. Yes, Good dog. Marky. Good dog. He's awesome. Well, best to you and to your family. We will talk Thank soon, you. and I will call you if there is any breaking news that we need to record. All right. Sounds great. All right. There he is. It's another edition of our Cubs Recap Podcast here on our YouTube channel, available audio only everywhere you get your favorite podcast. For my guy, Gordon, I'm Cap. Take that.